Welcome everybody to another edition of Ghost Statesman TV coming to you from the friendly confines of Walter Sillers Coliseum. Got a great show for tonight. We'll have men's basketball as they open up the regular season as well as the Lady Statesman getting their 2012-13 campaign underway. And we'll meet up with Jamie Chadwell, head coach of the football team. As he'll recap his 2012 season. We'll also have a video recap of our fall sports here at Delta State. But first of all, let's kick it back to Monday night. Lady Statesman to open up their regular season against Selma University. Joined now by head women's basketball coach David Midlick and coach congratulations your first victory as a collegiate head coach I know you're very excited to get this one out of the way and the lady statesman with a big win tonight 99 37 over Selma tonight your freshman had 49 out of those 99 points how big were those ladies tonight that your freshman that really helped us out well first off thank you JT but it's not you know I'll, I'll take the uh, win on behalf of our young ladies they're the ones that worked hard since Labor Day and I want them to enjoy enjoy victory whenever they can get it. Uh, freshmen played well. They were excited. I think they were a little nervous uh, the exhibition game versus Mississippi Valley, but I think they, when they came in the game, uh, Chelsea started, then uh, KK and Rebecca did, did great things. They filled up the stat sheet, and they, they played hard as well, too. They've improved over this past week since the Valley game, and uh, I was excited for them to have some success tonight. You, you mentioned improving since the Valley game. It really looked like the offense flowed a lot better. Uh, just from the opening tip-off, it looked like everyone was moving around without the basketball a lot better, and everything just overall went better. It's a work in progress, but without a doubt, I saw improvement tonight. Uh, we want to keep it up. Uh, we have the day off tomorrow and get back at it on Wednesday. But I was pleased in the second half. Uh, we were unselfish with the basketball. I think we cut cut a little bit harder, and you know, ended up having 25 assists, and and that's what you'd like to see as a coach them sharing the basketball and hitting the open person. A really big edge in the rebounding department tonight, 73-35. I know that one will make you happy. 32 offensive rebounds. We got 16 from Becca Rux. Is that is that what you stick her in there for is to rebound the basketball? Her and Seneca and Randy should get offensive rebounds when we play. And uh, we've challenged them to go to the boards hard and not watch when, when a guard shoots a shot or someone drives in, and we hope that continues. What are the things that we can take away from this game? I know as a coach you're always looking for something to work on, but the positives and some things you'd like to work on as well. Uh, it, you know, we, we want them to, to enjoy winning and learn, learn how to win. Uh, probably the same thing from the Valley game. Uh, I felt we, we got sloppy at times. I feel we can be a whole lot more aggressive. I mean, we just talked to them about aggressiveness on offense. Uh, and communicating and, and just getting tough defensively. I mean, we, we do not want to give up an easy shot. We want to have a hand in the face the whole time, so that's not going to, that's not going to change. I mean, we're going to work on, on, on pressuring shots, uh, 
there's been a lot of stats for difference in shooting percentage, whether there's even a hand down or a hand up. And uh, we're going to work offensively to get the ball in our, in our better players' hands and, and give them some good looks at the basket. With having to throw so many freshmen out into every game that we, we're going to have to play, what is your message to them before games? You know we're going to have some nerves out there. What, what kind of things do we talk about to our, to our younger players? Probably the same thing I tell all the upperclassmen. Uh, I want you to relax and be confident on offense. I want you to play like your hair's on fire on defense. And uh, if you do that, you know, the, I think all the fans can ask, and, and for right now, early in, in their careers, what I can ask of them is, is play unselfish basketball and play hard. And if you do that, you're going to give yourself a chance to win. We'll continue to work on the execution throughout the year. Coach, thank you very much for your time, and once again, congratulations. Thank you, JT. That was head women's basketball coach David Midlick. We'll take a time out. You're watching Go Statesman TV. Welcome back to Go Statesman TV, now joined by Statesman head football coach Jamie Chadwell. The Statesman finished up their season last weekend at Shorter. And coach, let's talk about a little bit about your first season at the head of Delta State and kind of what you're taking from it and kind of the struggles you might have went through. Well, obviously, uh, when you're trying to lay a foundation, uh, there's some struggles that you're going through. Uh, you know, there's, uh, when, you're, when you're three and seven, you don't know if there's a lot of positives, but uh, I believe there was, but we played a lot of young guys. Uh, we tried to establish the culture that we wanted and and create a program, not just a team. And, and that was our goal going in, is we want to create something that's going to last for the long haul. And when you're trying to do that as a foundation, um, you got to make sure it's smooth. So uh, you got to rough, uh, you got to try to smooth out all the cracks. And we had some, you know, cracks as we were trying to build it. Um, but there were some struggles, and, and I knew coming in, the biggest struggle was just trying to, all the new guys coming in, uh, we had 67 new players, all the new guys coming in and try to mesh them with their older guys. and, and um, uh, it took a long time to get that done, just to be truthful, and and, uh, and it was a struggle to try to get it done because there was a lot of tug of war going. Um, but I feel like we're heading in the right direction, and uh, we're excited about moving forward. And talk about I know, three and seven the record, but you talk, you were in every game you played. It seemed you had chances winning. You gave a couple of games. Always talk about having that with all those young guys playing it. You were competitive in every game this season in a tough conference. We were. Uh, you know, you you'd love to see uh, you know some of those close ones go your way. You might be sitting here feeling you know pretty good about yourself, but. I think you have to, um, you know, you have to earn that right to get those close ones, and you have to do those little things right. And, and for as a team, um, we didn't do the little detail things right enough to when those games got close. We didn't have that foundation that was solid enough to to try to overcome uh, some of the mistakes we made. And so, but I was pleased with the way we competed. I think there was a lot of times we could have gave up and we didn't, and so that's a positive sign, especially with the young guys. Now they've got experience. Um, they 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 know how good this conference is and the people we play. And so now they've got to, uh, uh, going into off season, really got to step up their game to understand if they want to compete at the highest level with this. So, um, yeah, it was frustrating losing some of those close ones, but I, I, I believe um, that, uh, you know, you have to go through some of those things to really get what you want sometimes, and I think it'll make our guys hungry. And you mentioned the tug of war kind of going on. How tough is it for a coach that you just went through this year where you had an old regime that had success, guys on that team that had success coming back, then having to go to a new coach, new system. Talk about that tug of war a little bit and the struggles that went on. Well, what's tough about it is uh, when, when you have previous success, uh, you know, and, and you and you inherit players that are used to the way things are done and the way, hey, it worked for, it worked for us this way, then this is the way we want to do it. And, and as you're trying to implement yourself and it's worked for you, um, and it's unfortunately today there's there's uh, kids want to question everything instead of just going okay yes sir coach, and so and that and that was I think what was the tug of war say, you know other guys say we've done it this way and it's worked why do we want to do it your way, uh, and just trying to uh, show them that the way we're trying to do things is will work and will last and and it's it's not only for football but for off the field and I think I think when you're if you come from a losing program you listen to anything somebody says because you want to change it but when it's when it's been as successful as we have been. Um, there's just going to be that natural uh, pull back and see, and, and that was the fight there, and, and uh, um, it was tough, but you know we we got through it, we got through it, and uh, we're excited about moving forward. I know there's a middle part of the season after suffering a few close losses that we seem to maybe possibly turn the corner when you look at what it at Tarleton State against West Church. Talk about getting those couple of wins out there and kind of how that settled everything and had them started listening to you more kind of like this. Well, well, it did. You know, we, we going up at that time, we'd had some close games and really not had some things, got some victories. 
and uh, be able to get, go to Tarleton and we're down going in the fourth quarter and get a big win and then come back and play West Georgia and, and uh, you know get a big win there when it was tight. Uh, you felt like you were starting to turn the corner, but it was, uh, you know, we were still, uh, as I say, on that fringe. You know, we were we, were, we could have gone either way because we still didn't have uh, enough confidence in each other, enough belief in each other that no matter what that we could overcome. And I think you saw that. We played Valdosta pretty well, but didn't didn't uh, couldn't overcome it, and we sort of just – uh, after that, we were just like a team searching, you know, and um, uh, you hope when you get two victories like that, that sustains you for the rest of the year, but we were still just so fragile in some of the things that we had that it was, it's tough to beat good teams when you're that way, especially when you help them, you know, and I think that was what I was most frustrated about is I felt like in every game that we played, um, we helped that team beat us instead of them just coming and take it from us, and uh, and so that's why I have some positive, um, uh, I feel positive about going forward because the turnovers, the way we tackled, some of those things we can control and we know we have to control. Uh, and so going forward, I, I feel good about that direction because now we, we can show, hey, you eliminate these things, maybe that scoreboard changes. And talk about it. On the offensive side of the ball, some bright spots are Andreas Truesdale, LeVon Downs, named to the all Golf South team for their play. They talk about Andreas, a freshman, coming in, performing like he did, along with LeVon Downs, a senior, kind of was that steady receiver that you had all season long. They were. I, I, I'm... You know, I'm excited about those guys making it. I think that's uh, great news for them. Um, LaVon um, was uh, really our most consistent player. He was a great leader for us and most competitive guy we have. And I'm really going to miss him, just to be truthful, because he's a good player, but I think he was a good teammate. He really tried to uh, do the things that we asked him to do, and it showed. That's why he had some success. Uh, and I think if you ask anybody on our team, they, they know where he stands. And um, But he just gave us that steady hand that we knew our, our quarterbacks knew, hey, we could look for him, and he'd make a play. Uh, we all felt with Rondreas that uh, with him signing with us that he had a chance to be a really good player. And um, he had an up and down season as far as uh, some of the things of being consistent all the time, but there's no doubt he has a lot of ability. And when, uh, when he starts slowing down a little bit and he goes 100 mile an hour on everything, when he starts slowing down a little bit, uh, he's going to definitely be a, reckon, a force to be reckoned with in the conference. And, um, but he's a great kid too, and he deserves what he got because uh, he was probably, you know, or no doubt, not probably no doubt, our, you know, our, our second best offensive weapon behind uh, LD, LeVon. So uh, thankful, thankful for him. I'm, I hate that we're losing LeVon, but I'm definitely thankful we got Ron Dress for another three years. And also in that backfield is Brant Boats, who had the kind of unique situation of being on defense, switching back to offense, and just kind of seemed like. He gave this offense kind of that power back type grab, but also had some loose of speed to him at times as well. He did. Brant was, uh, you know, obviously you know, we, the story's well documented about him being on defense early on and how bad a coach we were putting him <laughs> over there. Um, but uh, getting him back, I think it, uh, he is that power runner, but he also, you know, he's got enough speed to break some runs. And, and uh, we're going to miss him just because I think he, he was an unselfish player uh, and uh, had obviously great ability, but would do anything – for the team, and I think just love to play. And he's the type of kid that you that you uh, you want in your program. A guy that just loves it. And and uh, he had to end up having a great season for us from the I think I guess game four on. He was on offense, and and I don't know what he ended up with stats wise, but he had a great year. And, and um, if I if you had to poll our our team, I guarantee they'd tell you he was probably MVP over the last few games just because he played some quarterback and some different things that we needed him to do. And um, he's going to be successful no matter what he chooses because he's just that type of kid. He's got great character. I know a lot of excitement also with this defense. Me and JT were talking about it at the last game at Shorters, how young this defense really is and how good they can be going down the road. Look at Diego Lubin, Roy Island, and Kenny Barnes all named to the LGSC team. Just the way the defense, the youth they have, and kind of how you're excited about what they can be if they keep improving over the offseason going into next year. Well, we did. You know, you hate. I learned, we learned quickly that it's, uh, this is not the conference to let your guys sort of, um, you know, be brand new and trying to play because uh, the talent you're playing against and the type of teams, they'll, they'll expose you if you're not physically ready or mentally ready. But with that said, I, I, I think we know our future is bright there because we played uh, all those guys you mentioned are coming back. I'll have at least two years. Kenny's got one. Uh, we've got a lot of freshmen that got a lot of playing time at D line, and, and we've got some kids that we redshirted that we feel good about. And so I, I think our, our coaching staff knows that uh, our future is bright over there, but also. I think our kids, as we're talking with them, they know, hey, I've got to get stronger if I'm going to compete. I've got, and when you when you come in and you play right away, sometimes you take that for granted. But when, you, when you're when you going against these big guys that our defense has, I think it humbles you a little bit. And that's what happened with our, our young people. They got humbled, and I think it's made them hungry. So um, I look for us, you know, over the next two or three years to be really good and really stout at defense. we got to fill some holes, uh, but when we get those filled, I think uh, – 
I think our, our guys are, are ready to come out and be a great defense. And the last guy was mentioned at the All GSC team, All GSC team, Andrew Jones. Just talk about what he brought to the team for you this year, and just kind of how do you go about replacing a guy like Andrew Jones, that punter that can change the field so drastically as he did throughout the season? You know, I don't know if we can. Uh, Andrew Chipper, uh, if, as you know, is his nickname. Uh, he was phenomenal, you know, and he he helped us in a lot of uh, a lot of areas. When you when you're backed up, he can just boom the ball, and he did some kicking for us and stuff as well. He'll be hard to replace. I don't know if you can replace him. Uh, it might take ten guys to try to replace the things that he can do. Uh, he deserves, obviously, that all-conference because uh, there's no doubt he was the best punter that we saw all year, and uh, obviously the conference, uh, other conference coaches did as well. And, and uh, thankful for him because he had a lot of things he had to go through with his dad and cancer and different things, and just was a, just was a champion the way he handled those things. And, and I'm proud for him. I wish we had him back. You know, he uh, uh, when you get somebody like that can change that field, you feel good about it back there. And so. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him kicking somewhere else, uh, truthfully, if he gets a chance, gets a shot, because he's got that type of leg to, um, um, that you don't see every day. And now we move into the offseason, leave the 2012 season behind. Kind of what's your plan as we start the offseason? Kind of what changes do you think need to be made? Kind of your goals for the offseason coming up? Well, um, you know, obviously plan, you're losing, you know, you're losing a lot of seniors. We're going to lose some underclassmen, too, that uh, won't be back. So you, you're obviously you've been recruiting and you're hitting it full speed right now to try to go ahead and get your 2013 team assembled. Um, we're uh, busy right now with our, our guys that are returning, getting them back in the weight room, getting them settled, getting them, uh, getting their mindset right going forward, what we have to do um, to, uh, one, just wipe away what happened as far as learn from the positives that we did, but, the negatives, the record, all those things, that's gone. Uh, you know, we're undefeated now. 2013 team's undefeated, and that's our mindset. What we, as a staff, learned and what the players learned and we're, we're sharing with them is the reason why that season ended up the way it did was this, this, this. And these are things that we can control. What are you going to do to make that better? And that's been our challenge, and that's what we're doing right now and, and talking to them about their mindset, their approach uh, of what it takes to be successful consistently. And, uh, and so... We're excited about them because they're all they're all bought into what we're doing, and now we got to get other guys bringing in the program to fill some of those needs that we lost, some of the defensive backs and offensive line, and um, and the quarterbacks and some things like that that we're losing. So there's there's some big needs that we need to fill, um, but moving forward, our guys have a great attitude. Have, have had a great attitude this week. Obviously, uh, when you're um, when you get your butt beat like we did, uh, you can either tuck and run. Or you can say that's not happening again. Our guys will take that, taking that attitude. But our focus is um, the penalties uh, that we had, the turnovers that had. All those things are stuff that we did ourselves. And so uh, each each coach, uh, each player, we've challenged ourselves that those are things that you control every day in the way you handle yourselves. So and that's been our that's been our main focus ever since. To be truthful with you, Saturday about 5:30. As soon as that game was over. We've moving forward and, and uh, looking forward to 2013. And kind of with nine months between when shorter ends to when the next season kind of begins, kind of what's one and two on the whiteboard of kind of improvements you'd like to see on the field throughout this off season work and going into the next season? Well, I'm hoping, uh, you know, one, as we get into spring, I think hopefully you'll see a dramatic change as far as our, our young guys and their strength level. Um, because when they came in, maybe they weren't physically ready to play, but they had to play. And so I'm hoping that you're going to see a, a, a big change there physically from our off season of our guys as they come out stronger, heavier, faster. Um, secondly, uh, the first year in a you know in a new scheme and some different things when you don't have as much time uh, to try to get things implemented, it's always you always have some rough spots. And I think you show that showed with our inconsistencies on offense, defense, special teams. I think uh, I think our goal in this off season, I think what you'll see is we're going to be so much better in executing uh, our three phases because we've been in it now, we're coaching it now, the players now know what we're about. Uh, it's not just systems that you know do; it's just what buttons to push for your players. And what, when you have so many new guys, and when you're learning new guys, it's hard to find those buttons. Now we know those buttons. We know who we can holler at. We know we have to hug, you know. And so now that we have that, I think we can get the most out of those guys. And then uh, our execution, I believe, will be a lot better. And so that's going to be our focus this spring is, is getting everybody in the right position and getting them to maximize the potential they have. Well, Coach, we appreciate you taking the time to meet with us today. And good luck through your, uh, your offseason. We'll see you in the spring. Sounds great. God bless. That was Statesman Head Football Coach Jamie Chad. We'll go ahead and take a break. Come back right after this with more. Go Statesman TV.
Welcome back to Go Statesman TV. Now it's the men's turn to take the hardware at Walter Sills Coliseum. They opened up their 2012-13 regular season against Henderson State, as well as playing on Saturday against Lemoyne Owen. Now joined by Statesman head coach Jim Boone and coach, congratulations, your first win at the head of the Statesman basketball program. Let's talk about a tough game today, but able to make the free throws at the end and come out with the victory. Absolutely. I thought that uh, it's great to get a win. Uh, it's great for our guys. Uh, they've been working really hard, and they, uh, they certainly deserve this opportunity. i uh, really pleased with how we started the second half. You know, played, uh, played very well on both ends of the floor. I thought we moved the basketball. Uh, particularly they went zone for a few possessions and I thought we did a great job of just just flowing right into our zone offense and getting the uh, shots that we wanted and then uh, from a defensive standpoint we were really good for about a 10, 10 minute stretch there. There are obviously things to pick apart and things we're not pleased with but at the end of the day uh, very happy with the way we executed the last couple of minutes and uh, weathered the storm and uh, you know because Lemoyne's a very talented and big and strong athletic team and uh, we did a pretty good job of handling the ball and putting ourselves in a position to win the game. And going back to Tuesday night as well, Henderson State and Lamont, on both used pressure against you guys. How do you think you guys kind of improved from what Tuesday was to today against Lamont, with dealing with the press bringing the ball up before? Well, I, I thought we really did everything that we needed to do to win the game on Tuesday night at Henderson. You know, we uh, we dominated the game in terms of field goal, every stat except for the score and free throws. And, you know, so one of the things we've got to do is a better job of not fouling arbitrarily and putting guys on the line. And, you know, you look at that game, you think, well, you didn't handle the ball as well, but um, we only turned the ball over one time versus their press the entire 40 minutes, which is pretty good considering they pressed us for most of the game. But I definitely think that what we faced at Henderson coming in here tonight, we reacted and played better under pressure than what we played that night. The difference is, as I thought, in the Henderson game, which we saw a little bit tonight, they, um, they sped our offense up and made us play at a little faster pace than we wanted to play at. And I thought that tonight, uh, really in the second half, particularly when we opened the lead up, was because we were being patient and working to get what we wanted as opposed to being hurried. That's why you play this kind of schedule. You know, so you have the opportunity to play against really good teams that are going to throw a myriad of different things out there at you so that once you get in conference play, you are, you're prepared for those things. And a guy that's been big for you the past couple of games has been Terry League Jr., big night against Henderson, another big night. Let's talk about his play in the first two games of the season. I thought uh, Terry's played exceptionally well. Um, he, uh, tonight I thought he was a little bit anxious offensively, and once he settled in and let the game come to him, so to speak, he was outstanding and played really well. Um, you know, he's a big part of what we do. 
even though it's a small sample size, what have you learned about your team the first two games this season about maybe what you guys have done well, what needs to be worked on? Just kind of, what have you learned about this club just two games in? We've really got to do a better job of defending for 40 minutes. And, you know, that's going to come. There's so much that this team has to learn and has to absorb that we're just not, we're not there yet. We're going to be there. We're just not there yet. And, um, you know, I've said this a hundred times. You can't rush through the process. It's, it's not a microwave. We can't just pop this team in and put it on, you know, 30 seconds and the bell rings and we're ready to go. It's going to take, uh, you know, it's going to take a while. It's going to take patience, uh, probably more so than anybody on my part, and that we continue to work and develop to get better on a daily basis. And not a lot of time to rest. I'll be right back at it Tuesday night against Arkansas Monticello. In that short prep time, what are you going to do to prepare this team for the Bull Weevils on Tuesday night? We've got a tough game on Tuesday night. They're they're really good, and we're going to have to play better than we have in the last two, which is going to be the you know the the theme as we go along here in the preseason, referring to the preseason as our non-conference season, because um, every night out we're going to have to be a little bit better than we were the previous night. Uh, we'll try to do a little bit of work tomorrow and go through what we need to do to defend Monticello and uh, come back here on um, uh, Monday and, and hopefully have a really good practice and be ready to play on Tuesday night. Well, Coach, we appreciate you taking time with us. Congratulations. Go enjoy your first victory as the head coach of the Statesman basketball program. Well, I appreciate that very much. Thank you, guys. We'll enjoy that by getting in here and watching tonight's film and starting to break down Monticello. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. That's going to do it for our show tonight. Join us next Tuesday as we'll have more Go Statesman TV. Until then, Go Statesman.